Well, hey, everybody. My name is Mark Wendell. I'm a PM at Microsoft, and today I'm going to talk about how you can manage, secure, and share content with SharePoint Embedded. Uh, there's a little bit of an overview of what we're going to do, so I'm going to give you a quick tour of the APIs involved here, um, and then show you how you can create and secure containers, so some of the permissioning model stuff with that, managing container contents, and then how you can search container content as well. Uh, before I get into the thick of it, I just want to do a really quick plug for the SharePoint Embedded Developer Summit that we're having. This is a very small event where we're going to be doing some hands-on labs and kind of getting our hands dirty with some of the SharePoint Embedded tech here. Uh, the intent is, you know, if you're really serious about developing a SharePoint Embedded application, you can register and hopefully attend this event. It's going to be small. I think we're going to have about 50 folks that are coming for this. It's uh, March 26th through 27th. It's in person uh, at Redmond Microsoft main campus. And, and the intent is that you're going to be hands-on building kind of your own app and, and getting to the point where you're building a POC with, with uh, engineers and, and product experts on, on SharePoint Embedded. So if that sounds like it's interesting to you, you can register at aka.ms slash SPE dash summit. Registration is going to close on February 24th and spots will be confirmed, confirmed by March 1st. Okay. So now kind of getting into some of the technical details here. This is a graphic that we have shown over the past couple of weeks. Just a quick reminder of the product, uh, what SharePoint Embedded is. So SharePoint Embedded uh, allows you um, to write a custom application that can create and manage content within your own kind of content partition in an M365 tenant. Now that tenant might be yours, or if you're writing a multi-tenant application, uh, that might be you know, some of your customers. That content is uh, created in uh, a thing called file storage containers via graph APIs, and that's what we're gonna look at today, is just exactly how you do that. But I wanna step into like some of the permissions and things like that. So quick review again, what is a container? Um, well. You ha your app can create a collection of containers in a, in a tenant, and it's effectively a headless SharePoint content partition for your application. Each container is like a document library. It's not exactly the same thing, but that's the, that's the right metaphor for you to have in mind when you're writing an application and creating these containers. Your app has full control over those containers, and every container lives within a tenant. So now, let's talk a little bit about Permissions for that, uh, I had a timely question on the chat this morning that hopefully we can answer here. So at the application level, um, in terms of permissions for these container collections and things like that, all your app needs to ask for in order to manage these this collection of containers in the tenant is a new graph permission scope and role called file storage container dot selected. Um, and so this is this is a new one. It's actually, I think, still hidden, but but becoming available on on Graph. It grants your app access to containers and their contents. Now there's delegated. Uh, it's a permission scope and role, so there's both delegated and app only access. The the cool thing about this is that, is that it avoids overly permissive grant requests on sites and files. So you don't need to, in order to write a SharePoint embedded application, you don't need to go ask you know, your customer's tenant admin to give you sites.readwrite.all. So that's a big thing. Um, and you are able to also grant other apps access to containers that your app owns. And so if you want to access secondary apps or something like that, or maybe your customer needs to have read-only access to some of your container contents, that's possible as well. Um, now getting into the kind of the lower unit, the containers themselves, each container has four built-in permission roles, and those are reader, writer, manager, and owner. And it's a kind of progressively uh, in more permissive grants. And obviously, owner has full control on those. In each of those permission roles, you can assign both users and or groups to them. Um, and then you can also assign uh, external uh, guest users based on the tenant sharing settings. And so not going to kind of get too deep on that today. I don't have enough time, but, um, you know, just like for OneDrive and SharePoint, the tenant admin control can control external sharing settings for guest users. Well, there's a new partition in there where the tenant admin can uh, control whether external sharing is, is available for containers as well. Um, 
and then files. So last week I mentioned that the permissions of file storage containers are a little bit different than SharePoint. Um, specifically, the key difference there is that you cannot break permission inheritance with containers. And so you assign users and groups to those four roles at the container level, and then everything under there is additive. And so you can assign um, either at the folder level or at the individual file level, you can you can grant permissions to those kind of individual drive items as well. And those, you know, if you do it at a folder level, it will cascade down. So added permissions at the file and folder level. And then that is also what uh, enables some of the built-in sharing and collaboration experiences that you see with Office, Web, and Desktop. So that's pretty much it in terms of the theory here. Now we're gonna go get our hands dirty. I've got a few demos here. Uh, just some helpful links as we go through if you're trying to find some of the stuff that you're looking at. The VS Code extension, I'll briefly show it. We looked at that last week as well. You can access that at aka.ms slash SBE dash VS Code, or you can just search for SharePoint Embedded in the VS Code Marketplace. Also, the Postman collection, again, aka.ms slash SBE dash Postman, uh, if you want to be able to use that and import that. So, uh, I'm going to go in now and show you the VS Code extension. Just kind of pick up where we left off last week if you joined us there. Um, here we're just looking at some code, but if you click on the SharePoint embedded uh, VS Code extension on the left, you can see kind of where we left off last week. One of the things that we did is we loaded the sample app and I was trying to get it running. It took a little while to download all those NPM libraries and I wasn't able to quite show it. So I'll show that now. Um, but you can also export the Postman config. This is an environment file that after you run through the getting started steps in the VS Code extension, um, you can just import that environment file and kind of get to work quickly. This is what the uh, sample app looks like. We have two sample apps. This is the uh, React Fluent UI Microsoft Graph Toolkit one. So predominantly, most of the stuff happens within a web browser and most of the calls are directly to graph using a public client application. So once you have this app running, you can see you can manage your uh, storage containers. So I've got a couple here, content demo. Um, so this is just really making calls to graph to pull the contents of this container. Looks a lot like a document library and that's why that's a good metaphor. I'm not gonna go into uh, all of the things you can do in this sample app. I just wanted to kind of show you that it exists once you you know get it going from VS Code. All you have to do is hit run and you can run this. You can see this is running localhost for me um, and sign in and start playing with it, uploading content and, and you can check that out there. Um, what I want to do now is give you a quick tour of some of the APIs. And so uh, in Postman, like I said, you can export that environment from VS Code. If you want to import that environment, you can do that uh, from your file system. Also, that Postman collection, you can just go aka.ms slash SBE Postman. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I already have it in here. So, But you can, you can see all you have to do to import that is just put that URL. This is what the Postman collection looks like. Uh, when you when you have it imported, it's really just a bunch of requests so you can explore and navigate our APIs. There's two folders, delegated folder and application based on the type of authentication that you want to use. Um, and I'm going to open up delegated. I already have an access token. So what I'm going to show you here is just some of the new container management APIs. Uh, first thing I'll do is list all of the containers that I have. So I already have an access token. Um, it's pretty simple. I have that container type ID, and you'll notice that this is currently on the graph beta endpoint slash storage, file storage containers and containers. When I send that request off, you can see I have two containers in there, the same two that we're looking at in the sample application. Um, but let's create our first container together. So M365 community container, you give it a display name and description, pretty straightforward. I pass it container type ID, it really just identifies it with my application. And once that request succeeds, we created our first file storage container together. All right, now I'm gonna get that container. Um, again, all of these APIs are on graph. Uh, you can see that the container can have custom properties and permissions. So I talked about those permission roles. What I wanna do now is just um, show you what it looks like to be able to add a user to one of those permission roles. So here I've got 
Megan B. I'm on the create user permission request. I'm going to add Megan B. as a writer on this container. So when I send that request, Megan's now a writer on the container. Pretty straightforward to be able to grant users access to containers. So Megan's now a writer. You can also add groups like I mentioned in that slide. So I'm going to add everybody that's part of the retail member group uh, to be a reader on this container. Cool. That's it. Very straightforward. Now when I go get that container object, you can see I've got a few different permission assignments. First of all, I'm the owner because I created this container with delegated permissions. That associated user context is granted ownership permissions on the container. And there you can see the retail members group are readers on that and Megan is a writer. All right. Now, going back up to the top, this is a, one of the key things I want to show you today. Every container that you create has an ID. Now, the cool part about containers is that when I go over to the existing graph APIs, now I'm no longer on beta. I'm on the V10 endpoint, and I'm talking to the drive object. So that existing well-known mature API to interact with drives and drives item, drive items works because you can treat a container as a drive in Microsoft Graph. So if you've got a bunch of existing code that interacts with drive and drive items, apart from the container management, once you get into kind of managing the content of that, uh, of that stuff via the drive and drive item APIs on Graph, it's just going to work. It's the same interaction model. So that's a big thing. Now, I got that container that we created together as a drive object from Graph. Now I can go take a look at the content in there. So I'm going to get the drive items. And you'll see that it's empty. We just created that container together. So I upload a Word file. And that's it. Pretty simple. That's small file upload. Um, you're just adding drive items and things like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. I don't have time to get into all of the details and the APIs. But the best part about it is these are the mature graph APIs that hopefully you've come to, come to have some experience with. Um, we talked about sharing now. I, I just added this file. Um, if I want to be able to share that link, I can create a, a share link at the slash share link or slash create link endpoint. If I want it to be just a view only link to the folks in my organization, I can do that. And now that file that I just uploaded has this share link and that I can, you know, send via email or a Teams message or whatever. Um, now, just quickly covering search. Um, there's a bunch of different search capabilities that you get, but again, the key takeaway here is that all of the content uh, within SharePoint embedded containers gets fed into the index as normal as you you know you'd expect from OneDrive and SharePoint content. And so again, I'm just using I'm using beta here, but I can actually use the V10 endpoint. The existing search queries just work against SharePoint embedded content. Um, there is in the future going to be an additional query parameter that you have to provide um, in order to access SharePoint embedded content. I'll cover that in a future in a future call. It's not available yet, um, but at the moment it all just works without that without that additional parameter. So here we can look at all the containers by searching for drives across my container type ID. So this is now a new managed property. And I can issue that query and I can get all of the containers. So I can search, you know, I can search for all of my containers by title across my uh, container type ID or anything like that. And then again, if I want to find content in a particular container, let's say I'm looking for a, this is a drive item, so a file. I'm looking for the word budget in a particular container. Pretty straightforward. Again, these are the existing uh, graph query APIs that you can access. And then um, I can search for different things like that, search for content in a container. So that's a really quick tour of some of the APIs. Key point is that, you know, you can go get the SharePoint embedded uh, Postman collection, import it quite easily, set up your environment using the VS Code extension. The main new API set are things dealing with the new containers entity. And then once you have a container, you can interact with that as a drive and, you know, with drive and drive item APIs. So that's it for me. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat and I'll kind of go back and answer some questions. Otherwise, thanks for the time. Mm -hmm.